So today I'm gonna to be talking about the pet go bag, specifically for dogs, obviously. The advantage to having a pet go bag is obviously you have everything ready to go at all times and you just grab it and go. You don't have to worry about what you need and where to find it. But the other advantage is that if you have a dog that's big enough to carry a bag, a bag uh, this guy is about 59, he's about 46. That can be a huge weight off your shoulders, well, literally and figuratively. So you don't have to carry all these other things in your bag for your dog. If your dog is big enough, strong enough, you know, agile enough, and comfortable enough to carry his or her own go bag. So I'm going to talk about each item, put it in the bag, and then I'll show you how the bag goes on the dog. Probably the most important thing is a leash, and the most important kind of leash, in my opinion, is one that's made out of paracord. So paracord is known as 550 cord in the military, 550 pounds of breaking strength. And if you have a leash that's made out of it, it doesn't require you to carry a separate roll of it. Now you should still have one in your everyday carry or your three day pack, but this is made out of 550 cord and there's 220 feet of the 550 cord in here. So you can see the strands are comprised of seven individual strands. So each you know, 550 cord has seven individual strands within it. So, so you could take apart the leash, cut off about six feet, you still have 214 feet of 550 cord. And you can use that for makeshift tourniquets, you can use that to string up your bag so you're not getting bugs and all kinds of debris on yourself when you're trying to sleep. And you can take apart that string and further divide it into seven individual strands and use it as a fishing line, etc. Dental floss even, um, security perimeter, trip line. So have a leash and I recommend 550 cord leash. Have an extra collar. So these guys sleep with their collars off usually because the, you know, the jangling of their dog tags uh, makes it kind of a pain to try to sleep. So if we have the bug out in the middle of the night and I don't remember to get their collars or I just can't spend the time to grab them. I keep a spare collar in here. I should have another dog tag on here. That would be something that probably be important. Next, I keep pictures of my dogs, recent pictures, um, and not just in their go bag because you know if a dog disappears with the bag, then I don't have the pictures. But I keep them in the bag. I also keep them in my three day pack. And that way, if one of the dogs goes missing, I have a much easier way of showing a picture of what the dog looked like recently and putting that on the bulletin board because there's gonna be all kinds of people looking for the pets. So pictures of your pets, recent pictures, and obviously of your children and family member as well. Uh, you know, whatever priority they rank in on that hierarchy. So a couple extra dog treats. Uh, they had a little sample of them earlier. Uh, Ned, you want the knuckle bone? Steve can't decide whether to get the, Steve, come on, come on, come on. sit, sit. So. It's important to have a couple extra dog treats. Uh, that'll keep them busy when you know, you're preoccupied with something else and you're trying to you know, get instructions for the next movement, you're trying to map out where to go. That'll keep them quiet. They have something to work on. And that also you know, is just fair because they're gonna be traumatized probably if it's a really disastrous situation, it's gonna be screaming. So I'll keep a couple of these. But on that topic, of trying to keep them calm, there are some supplements. These aren't hard medications, but supplements to help comfort your dog. So these are useful, not just in an emergency situation, but fireworks, you know, loud noises, new environments, if they're traveling, which they certainly will be in a bug out situation most likely if you're not staying in, if you're trying to get away, you're gonna be traveling. You might have to go in environments, buses, who knows what FEMA is gonna set up and whether you trust them. But the more you can help your dog adapt to a really dynamic and uncomfortable environment, the better for your dog and the better for you and the better for everybody else around you. So Adaptal, I got this from my vet and they have a collar that is activated by the dog's body heat and that's to help them calm down. And there's also, I don't know how to pronounce this, Zilkeen, Zykeen. Um, and this is a supplement that you can give to your dog to help them deal with the same type of environment. I recommend you talk to your vet soon rather than procrastinate indefinitely and never get around to it so you can see how your dog reacts and if it does make 
a noticeable difference. And again, you might find it's useful for more than just an emergency bug out situation. You know, new travel when you're going to Thanksgiving and you're at your relative's home or fireworks on 4th of July. Uh, I keep a card for my vet in case I need to ask her any questions, uh, but phones are probably gonna be down anyway. Just doesn't hurt to have that. So somebody else who finds the dog perhaps can go through and see, you know, this is just another way to help locate the owner because my vet knows my address. They know how to reach me. That's the vet's address and phone number. Can opener. Uh, chances are if, you know, they're giving out dog food, it's, it could be in a can, it might not be a pop top and can openers are probably going to be short supply. So this is a pocket can opener, stays in the pack. First aid. So the great thing about pet first aid is that it's dual purpose. So if it's safe for your pets, it's probably safe for your people. This is a septic powder. This or this kind of go hand in hand. This is the Yunnan Bio. Uh, talk to your vet and if your vet trusts it and you trust stuff that comes from China, this is a pretty ancient medication. I don't know if that makes it more appealing or less, but you, in an event of a severe bleeding traumatic situation, you'd pop open a capsule, sprinkle it on the wound after you've cleaned it, debrided it, and this will really help the pet or the person's ability to clot blood. I found out about this because I was asking my vet if there's something like quick clot that's for pets, and she recommended this. But if you don't want that, then septic powder is good. So if you come across, you know, your dog that's injured, cut, so whatever, um, clean off the wound the best you can. You could use something like this, like a wound spray or the wipes. The advantage to these, even though they're a little bulkier, is that you don't have to find a sterile towel. You don't have to waste your water. These are pre-moistened antiseptic wipes or presumably sterile. They stay in a sealed package. So they can be used on your pet and of course on your person. So if you and your pack are coming across someone who is injured, Maybe you decide that you want to stop and be a good Samaritan if it doesn't pose any additional risk to you and your family members. Help them clean off the wound, spray it down. If they're severely bleeding, some of this for the Yunnan Bio, and then gauze or the, uh, the medical bandage. And this is a bandage that is safe for pets. Ask your vet. They actually have um, pet white or pet wraps that are designed for pets to be safe for pets. Uh, I also, just in case, carry top 10 dog toxins. So, you know, in a panic situation, I can at least make sure that I'm not giving them antidepressants, instead of minifin, um, you know, fertilizer, xylitol, uh, stuff that you might not know or remember is toxic. Just a good little reminder. Pet poison helpline. I don't know if the phone lines are ever going to be running, but there's all kinds of new hazards in an environment that is, is dynamic and unpredictable, is an emergency bug out situation. Burt's Bees, because it's useful for more than just human lips, uh, helps with chafing, et cetera. Um, Superglue. Now, Superglue has all kinds of medical uses. And in a pinch, if you don't have access to you know, a field um, suture kit, you can use crazy glue to close up the wound and hold it in place. So crazy glue weighs very little, goes in the pack. Uh, light up harness, this is USB rechargeable harness. And the advantage to that, now it's getting a little darker, you can kind of see that you can change the color, uh, make it flash, and you know if you just decide on one color, for example, that does at least two things. One is it makes it easier for you to you know, identify your dog uh, when, it's when your dog is next to you. But if your dog goes missing, it's also easier to, you know, hey, you know, did you see a dog uh, wearing a fluorescent harness with a blue light? That should narrow it down pretty nicely. Uh, I also have a picture. Here's a picture of the dog. Did you see it? You know, that would help you locate your dog. They have, you know, GPS transceivers, but those are not going to be very useful in an SHTF situation, you know, grid down scenario because cell towers are going to be compromised most likely. Power may or may not be operational. Who knows how long those cell towers will run on generator power. So you can't rely on the GPS trackers, but it might not be a bad thing to have if you keep those charged and you have them on your go bag collar. Maybe not all the time, just in an emergency, those are there. So if your dog goes missing and the cell towers are up, um, there is a way to locate your dog. I 
If you have a big enough dog and a big enough bag, I would recommend using the GPS tracker that I use in my vehicles and my suitcases when I travel. The harness, very useful. Um, these guys usually tie together, so even if they both you know, aren't wearing a harness, just one of them is, that would help because then they travel as a pack usually. Dog boots, if you're going out in an earthquake, there's gonna be debris all over the place. Are you gonna go out barefoot you know, by choice? Probably not, but your dog's pads, they might be a little bit more rugged than your feet, but they still are gonna get skinned up. They're still gonna get cracked or cut or subject to who knows what if you're trekking through new environments. So try to get your dog used to wearing these things if possible, because if your dog is big enough to where your dog is traveling under his or her own power, you know, not a small Maltese that's going in your backpack, your dog might be running next to you for miles to get away, to get to safety, to get to food. You might be on your bicycle, your dog might be running, or you might be walking, your dog might be walking. The point is, the first point of failure in these guys is their pads. Uh, he's run a half marathon wearing these, and at first it was really awkward for him to walk around on them, both of them, but now they're used to it, and it makes a tremendous difference. Their pads will get skinned up after a few miles, especially if it's hot out, but if they have their shoes on, he can go 13 miles, and he seems to really enjoy it. Medication. If your dog's on medication, have a backup set of the medication. And this is also a good way to not just have the day-to-day -day different medications, but if you have the Zyklene, the medication, you know, it's not, I don't think it's a harsh medication. It's more of a supplement. But if you're using this, then you might want to pop a couple into each day so you have that handy that you can administer to your dog as needed when you're traveling and you're going through airports, you know, terminals, traveling on buses, traveling in other people's cars. It's going to be stressful for you and insanely stressful for your dog, especially, you know, with all the different people that are screaming and panicked as the default will be for most people in an environment that are not familiar with. Consider having a calming supplement for your pet. This is dried dog food, it takes up a lot less space. Um, you just add water, maybe like four to six parts water to the dried food and it compresses nicely. They seem to like the flavor, it lasts a long time, it's freeze dried, it's made out of also ingredients. Um, you know, you wanna use your water conservatively and these apply, you know, they screw onto the end of most water bottles. That's why it has a different size adapter. Um, and all you do is just put it on the end and then they can drink, you know, like a hamster and it adjusts to lock it, then you open it, and they can just drip drink from that water bottle. And that way, you're not wasting water, pouring it into a bowl, and then what do you do with all the water that they don't drink? You just dump it out, that's kind of a waste. This is their food bowl primarily. It can be used for water, but the water is usually out of the water bottle. This is how I feed them their mix. So I put the dried food in, mix the water in when I get access to water, and now they can eat. And I like this one because you'll see how small it folds up. Folds up just like that. Has a you know a little carabiner strap. So on that paracord leash, um, I have a carabiner on the end. These are really useful for all kinds of things. Uh, but you know this is also a quick way to just attach to the collar and now you go and it's you know this one has a 75 pound braking strength which is actually more like 100 because they're conservative i carry poop bags and these are useful for more than just poop uh, if you're doing you know field first aid you don't have surgical gloves maybe put a set of these in your hands double or triple them up and that's going to prevent cross contamination from your hands to someone's wound or their blood to your hands if you have open wounds on your hand so Poop bags are crucial. It's not just for, you know, avoiding a citation in an emergency. Uh, chances are if people are dying and medical is spread thin, they're not going to be prioritizing citing people for not picking up their poop. So, you know, still do the right thing to the extent it's practicable, but they're more useful than just that one singular purpose. So I also keep a carabiner on here. This is more of a professional climbing carabiner um, and I won't know you know what 
I'll need it for. I just know that it's a practical thing to have. And this, um, you know, could allow theoretically the dog to be hoisted. I can also use it to clip additional things <clears throat> onto the side of the bag here. So you never know what you're going to need it for, but you know that you're probably going to need it for something. Uh, flashing light, even though this is reflective, that helps. Uh, a USB pack. And the reason I have that USB pack is it, it does add a little bit of weight, but it helps to have an extra backup power supply. I can charge, you know, the harness, which is, of course, USB rechargeable. But it's also a quick way to rebalance the pack. So as he's walking and it's starting to slide because it's too heavy on this side, I can quickly move that. It takes up a little bit of space, adds a nice balancing feature, and that helps him be more comfortable when he's walking so he doesn't have to constantly readjust. Uh, you know, if you have a standard poodle, maybe carry a brush, not necessary. Um, this is probably all you need, and you really don't need a brush, but, you know, getting out debris of their coat would be useful. Um, poodles get matted, other long-haired dogs get matted, but you have more important things to worry about. I don't know if it's worth carrying this brush, just we use this pack a lot, so I keep it in here. Then I have this tick key. This is called a tick key. So if you're bugging out and you know, you're going through heavy bush, your dog could be prone to getting ticks. And if they do, then now you have one more thing to worry about with all the diseases that ticks carry. You wanna get out that tick as soon as you can. This just plucks the tick out. You put it in, twist, and the tick pops right out. So now we're going to put the bag onto Steve. Steve, can I borrow you? Come here, Steve, come here. Come here, let's demonstrate. So it goes on over the head, needs to go through this leg. This comes up like that, goes up like that. And now we're ready. So now he's got a pack that carries a good amount of his own gear, first aid stuff that's useful for humans as well. And the dog carries the pack, but the pack can also carry the dog. So if I need to lift him up to the truck, you know, if someone is giving us a ride, we're getting out of town, uh, it's a lot more reliable to just lift them up by the pack. They can also use you know, the carabiner if they're trying to hoist, and it's a safer way to transport the dog, something to grab onto. Otherwise, you know, what are you gonna grab onto? Snout, tail. Uh, so here's the, the night eyes carabiner. You know, I can clip it on up here, or I can clip it on right here, and it's easy for him to walk, so he's pretty much comfortable with it. So yeah, they really seem we enjoy it.